Now, if someone chooses to accept what you're offering to them, it is a possibility that they can enter into the same choices that you've made by agreeing with you. So I was also on a flight once from Hanover in Germany, and I had to change in Brussels in Belgium to get a flight back to the UK. And I was just sitting, having done a conference in Hanover, and I was just waiting and just, I think I was editing some videos, audios and things, just while I was waiting, I didn't pay attention. And then I was aware that there seemed to be a bit of something in the air where people were a bit anxious. And then I looked and, oh, we've, we've gone past boarding time. Um, and cut a long story short, we boarded over an hour late, took off well over an hour late, and the flight was an hour and 40 minutes. And virtually everyone on that flight had uh, connections that they were going to miss. So the uh, staff on the plane um, basically just sort of said, look, we're really sorry. Um, we'll try and let you know about reconnecting flights and different things. And they just sort of kept quite quiet because people were quite angry, some of them, because uh, it was their fault, actually, that uh, what had happened. You know, they had a problem with the tunnel going to the plane, um, which wasn't, wasn't fitting correctly and they wouldn't allow people to step over it. Um, and actually, I went up to the check-in and said, look, what's the problem? I said, oh, I said, well, there's a solution. Open the check-in below and let's walk to the plane and just bring up a, a ladder like you normally do. And they were like, oh, no, we can't do that. But in the end, that's exactly what they did. But they did it an hour late. So I went on the plane. I sat down and it was like, OK, I'm not missing my flight. I choose. And this this thing, I choose the reality. But I actually just asked the angels that fly with me to make it that the plane would get there. So I would catch my flight and probably about 20 minutes in um there were all the smiling faces on the staff and they sort of started telling people where their um checking gates would be and we got there on time now when i got off the plane there i was then told because i was flying off mainland europe i had to go through security again so i was beginning to walk to security and there was this girl um i guess in her 20s uh, and she said oh are you going to bristol and i said yeah i am going to bristol airport she said well We've, we've got to go through chicken. I think we've, we're going to miss our flight. And I said, look, just walk with me. We'll be OK. We'll catch our flight. So we just carried on walking. We got to the, the another terminal because we had to go to a different terminal. And then we got to the uh, security and there was a big, long line and time was getting short. So I just said, OK, let's just walk. And we walked right through the line <laughs> and, it, and we're on the other side. And again you don't i didn't feel anything but it happened and i think the girl was just like so shocked she didn't know what to say we carried on walking got got on the plane and caught our flight so again you can't do this out of panic anxiety worry you've got to be in rest and you've got to know it's the father's heart then you then you just start choosing realities that align to the father's heart and there are multiple ways you can do it but just choose one and see it manifest and that's reality but you might need to practice on small things um, and I had lots of opportunity on practicing on little things of choosing realities. You know, I remember I was in New Zealand. I was speaking in uh, Auckland and uh, it was raining so hard. There was thunderstorms, lightning. It was it was quite a, quite an amazing meeting speaking with all this lightning flashing in the background and things. But I did finish. I came out um, and all of the cars in the car park were lined up because someone had locked the gate and they couldn't get out. The caretaker had obviously forgotten we were in there We because we were the last ones out. Locked the gate, we couldn't get out. So I went to check what was going on. I went to the first car. that happened to be two ladies that were invited by a friend of mine who weren't believers. One was a Hindu and one was you know, an atheist, I think. But I'd been talking about angels and all the supernatural things. And they just looked at me and smiled and with a little twinkle in their eyes. I said, well, do you think you could ask one of those angels to open the gate? Now, instantly, I replied, it's OK, I'll open the gate for you. And they said, well, it's locked. So I walked up to the gate, took the padlock, opened the padlock, opened the gate, and they all went out. Now, how? I chose to. There was no panic, no doubt, no belief. I just did because god didn't want all those people stuck in there and he didn't want me stuck in there either because i needed to go back to where i was staying 
Um, and so things work out when you're in a flow of the life of God and in a place of rest and you're just cooperating with the father in all things in life. And the father wants to bless us. He wants us to be blessed. And so we can outwork that blessing in these sort of things. But practice and, you know, learn about time. Don't have negative perspectives on time. Don't be tethered to time and aging and death. Break free from the negative aspects that the world sees time in and embrace the positive that time is there to serve us. And we can use time effectively in our lives in that way. If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.